All right, Art Nerds, we are going to be talking about the element of form, okay? And before I talk too much about the element of form, I want to talk about something else super quick. What do I have here? You're right, I got a square, okay? Now I want you to compare that to this one. I'm going to add a little bit more to it. What is this now? If this is a square, what I did by adding to it, I created something called a cube. Now, the difference between these two is squares, they're shapes. I can draw as many squares as I want on this piece of paper, run out of my Sharpie ink, get a new Sharpie, and I can still keep drawing more on my paper because I'll, you know, even though uh, at one point I might not be able to see it, but I can still draw squares. There's an infinite number of squares I can put on this paper. And it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. However, if I have something like a cube, maybe a better visual for you. How about a box? Okay. Is there a point in which if I kept filling up my room with these cheese it boxes, that I will run out of space in my room? You're right. There will be a time in which I can't fit any more boxes, just like there is a maximum capacity of people in your vehicle, okay? There ends up being a point in which nothing else fits, okay? And that's the big thing with form, okay? It is when you have something that takes up space, okay? It has length, it has width, and it has height. Those are some of the big things when you talk about form. Beautiful. Okay. Dimension one, dimension two, dimension three. That's why cubes are considered something that are 3D. However, shapes are 2D. They just have length and width. That is the big difference between the two of them. So in your exercise, you are comparing and contrasting shapes and forms, okay? And in the first half, you have six different images and you are to identify whether or not they are an illustration of shape or an illustration of form. Now, one of the big things that can set off the difference between shapes and forms can be value, okay? by creating the illusion of space and the illusion of depth by having value, I also can create the illusion of form, okay? So that is one big thing. So trying to identify that as well. So, um, you know, number one, you write down here, is it a shape or is it an illustration of form? It's not gonna be real form because it's a piece of paper. Okay, it is flat, okay? Now, if the object that you're looking at was in real life, okay, would it be three-dimensional? That's what you really want to identify, okay? Same with this one. Is this a shape or a form? Shape or a form? All the way through six of them, okay? On the bottom half, things are a little bit different, okay? You are trying to create something that's three-dimensional using each of these different shapes. Now, when I was doing my comparison between the square and the cube. Notice how I started with a square right here and I built off of it to make my cube, making it 3D. Now there's a couple of things that you can do. So like I can build off this one and make it into a cube. So that's what you would draw right here. I could build off of my rectangle and make a rectangular prism. Draw it right there. This circle, okay, you have two options. This could be a sphere Okay, where you add some shading to make it look 3D, but it also could be a cylinder. Okay, think like a can of oatmeal or a pop can. Okay, you got a cylinder there. This triangle, you also have a couple options. Okay, you could make it into a cone, think like an upside down ice cream cone, or it could be a prism, a triangular, well, pyramid that is, a triangular pyramid or a square pyramid. Okay. 
So those are some of the different ways that you convert them into forms. And that's what I want you to do on that last bit. So first top, identifying shapes and forms. Bottom top, creating form from shapes. So if you have any questions, let me know. I hope that this was helpful.